On average, how far into a pitch would you know it was a pass? For me, I can probably know like right off the bat. I'm not saying that's everybody else's skill set, <laughs> but I know story well enough to know that a screenwriter doesn't know their story very well. Um, but with that being said, it also depends on how you got the pitch, right? Because if I'm doing this as a favor to someone, I'm going to listen to the entire thing, right? And I'm also possibly going to now engage with you after the pitch, et cetera, et cetera, even if I know we're never going to buy this, right? Or it might be the opposite because I know how you got here. I know we're going to buy it. So it doesn't matter what you say, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't really even have to take in all the information. Um, but you know, from the script consultant side of it, it's easy to tell when someone doesn't know their story, but sometimes people don't know how to pitch and it's not that they don't know their story. And so this is where I would say the executive kind of has to put on a script consultant hat if they care, if they want to bother to do this so that they can figure out, is it that you don't know how to pitch or you don't know your story or you just don't really have a story, right? By asking the right kind of questions to get the right kind of answers. So these days I, you know, I've been in a couple of pitches lately and they've been more conversational, which I think is really helpful for the writer, right? Because writers can be uh, introverted, right? And they don't want to have to come in here and present and they might have something really great to say, but it's just not coming out the way that they expect it to, you know, expect it to come out. Um, but to go back to the example about zombies, if we're not taking zombies now and the first few words out of your mouth are zombies, then I know we're done. Now you have the hour, so I'm going to let you talk, <laughs> but I'm not, you know, we're not going to buy this. Um, I think if I'm confused throughout your pitch, I now have to ask myself if I'm willing to do the work of not being confused because it's going to be my job to go in the next room to pitch it to the rest of the company. You know what I mean? If I'm this confused about what you're giving to me, then I can't possibly be that interested in it. And for the most part, you know, executives are looking for what fits for their brand and their mandate, et cetera, but they're also looking for what excites them because they're listening to pitches all the time. They're reading screenplays all the time. So they're looking for something that excites them. So if they're listening and whatever it is you're pitching doesn't excite them, then they probably already know we're not going to do this. Or because they've been listening so many pitches and because they've been reading so many screenplays, they already know they have five of those already in development. So they're not going to buy this one, <laughs> right? Because they already have that in development. So there are a lot of things that can play into why someone would pass on something. But I think most executives know pretty quickly that this is probably something they're going to pass on, even if they do have to do the rest of the pomp and circumstance. Well, you said um, it could be A, they don't know how to pitch. And it could be also be they don't have a story. Mm -hmm. How many times did someone come in and they really didn't have a story? Lots of times. Lots of times. Now, with that being said, that's without my script consultant hat on to then ask them the questions that are necessary so I can pull it out of them, right? Because if you are a professional writer, I would like to assume I don't have to do that, that you would be able to come in and find ask for a log line. You can tell me clearly in two sentences what your screenplay is about right? But not everyone can do that. And so if you've been talking at me for 45 minutes and then on the end of it, I can't give you a log line back, you don't have a story, right? Maybe you've got a great idea, you know what I mean? And your great idea was zombies, right? But what are the zombies doing? Who are we rooting for? The zombies? Or is there, you know, a police officer, <laughs> you know, who is, you know, looking for his family and dealing with zombies while he's doing that because he's trying to get back to his wife. That's what the story is. But if you spent all your time talking to me only about zombies and how cool they are and how fast they run and what they can and cannot do, but you never told me about the heart, you never told me about what I'm physically going to be watching, what, what goals or problems they're trying to solve, then I'm going to say to myself, there's no story here. And maybe there is, and you just forgot to tell me because you got so excited about zombies and talked about it for 45 minutes. And so that's what I mean by, well, then you just don't know how to pitch, right? You haven't learned that skill and it's a skill set. So it's not easy to learn. And again, it's not something that people are out there teaching. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So usually it's trial and error. And this is again, why having, um, you know, a script consultant since I exist now, but having a manager or an agent and people who you can practice with people who should know that executive well enough to know when you go in this room, this is what you want to do. Right. Like that's kind of a, 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 a I'm not going to say it's their purpose, but hey, if they have sent people in this room to pitch for this person before, they should be able to give you some pointers right on what you should do when you're in that room. So I think it could be 
either of the above. But a lot of times when I've done like more, more so pitch contest, if I've been like a judge on, in a pitch contest or something like that, um, it's happened also when I was a, a network executive, but more so when I'm uh, at a, like a pitch contest or something like that. And the amount of people who come up and pitch and never get to their story, they never get there. Or I can tell they don't know what it is. Like they got a great idea, you know what I mean? But they just haven't quite uh, connected all of the dots so that there's an actual story. And some people are great presenters. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen many people that they're amazing at presenting something, maybe not executing it, and then vice versa. Right. And and those executors just freeze up and, and oftentimes aren't given a chance. But I, I exactly. you know what you're saying, most people don't know how to pitch. Yeah. And that's what makes it unfair, right? Because you could have a great story, but if you don't know how to present it, then the people don't know what they're buying, and then now it got passed on. Or maybe you're a great presenter and you came in and you did something that got me excited and now I like you and now I want to work with you and then I get the screenplay and I go, <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What is this? Yeah. Right? So, you know, it sucks in that way that, you know, you don't know which thing you're getting, which is why I say, you know, with my script consultant hat on, I know what questions to ask so that I can understand if they know what their story is. You know what I mean? And from there, I can then decide, okay, they actually know what they're doing or they don't know what they're doing. They got a great idea. Now, do I want to sign up for them not knowing what they're doing? Because if I'm an executive, that's more work on me. It's more work on me if I sign up for this knowing you don't know what you're doing, but I really like your idea, which is why sometimes you'll then be given your check as a screenwriter sent on your way and then we'll bring in a more experienced writer to take it to where it needs to go because we can tell that you didn't know what you you know what you were doing or you wouldn't be able to take it where it needs to go. Um, I believe it was uh, Ozark and I can't think of his name now, but uh, the creator was someone who had worked in features forever, but he knew he didn't know TV. So he didn't expect to go in and then run the show. He knew we need to bring someone in here who can do TV, who knows series, and that's not me. And so a lot of times we'll take it personally as writers because we're sensitive, right? We'll take it personally and we'll think it's, it's me, woe is me, blah, blah, blah. But it's like you have to know what your skill sets are. You have to know that this is a collaborative process and you have to know there's a, there are millions of dollars being spent. It's okay if someone comes in and grabs the baton from you to take it to the next place. It's okay. How does a writer with no connections build a relationship with a studio executive? You know, there used to be like no way for you to do that, right? <laughs> the good thing is social media exists now. Um, if people are on social media, I always tell people Twitter is probably the best place for you to be. A lot of people who are on Twitter are on there because they want to be open, especially since the pandemic. People are on there, they're reading stuff, they're talking back to you, you know what I mean? Um, I have a client who was staffed from Twitter Right, so Twitter's a great place to just kind of build community. Um, you don't wanna go on there and immediately respond to someone and say, hey, I'm a writer, I have a screenplay, come read it. It's not that, it's literally relationship building. Follow the people that you're interested in following and respond like a human being who's just on Twitter. If they say something about their dog, respond about your dog. <laughs> you know, if they're saying something about their kids, respond about your experience. If they then start talking about their show, now, hopefully you're watching that show and that's why you're following them in the first place, you can start saying some stuff about the show and things that you like and the blah, blah, blah. And then one day they'll say, hey, I'm gonna read some screenplays today, send them. And now because you've been interacting as a human being, before then, they go, oh, this person, because you know, on social media, we tend to think we know each other because we've been on there, you know, kind of interacting as our handles. And they'll go, oh, this person is sending their script, I'll read it, right? Doesn't mean it'll turn into anything, but maybe it will. Um, outside of that, you know, there are a lot of different uh, organizations now who give you opportunities to meet with people. Some of them are, are, are paid. Uh, they have fees, so you just have to kind of look in, look into that to see if that's something you want to budget. Um, but there are uh, different companies that give you an opportunity to do quick little meetings, quick little general meetings, like I said, or pitch fest where you get to kind of you know be in front of people. Um, I don't know if executives are attending film festivals like they used to, except for the big, huge ones, right? They're all at Sundance. If you can go to Sundance, go to Sundance, right? Because now you can just kind of hang out and see who you can meet. Again, this is not walking around shoving your screenplay into people's faces. They don't get much time off and they're not even off while they're at Sundance because they have to go to the stuff, you know what I mean? They have to see what's happening. They might even have other meetings they have to be on while they're there. So the few moments where they are sitting around having a beer, that's what they want to be doing. So just be a human being and just get to know them 
them. They know why you're there. You know, they know that you want to be a filmmaker of some sort. It'll probably come up in conversation. And then after you see that, oh, we're actually connecting on all of these other things, there might be an opportunity for that person to give you their card or for you to say, hey, I would love to send some stuff your way if you're open to it. And if they say that they're open, that's your chance. Get the card and email the stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, other than that, it's the same thing when it comes to agents and managers. You know, you just kind of have to get out there and advocate for yourself and do your own thing. And when it's time, they'll come. They'll find you. You know what I mean? Uh, but at least nowadays, social media exists in a way where you can interact with people um, again, you're not shoving your work in, in front of their faces, but you're interacting with them so that you can get to know them as a person as much as you can on social media, right? And then see if you can build a relationship from there so that when you are ready to pitch something, you're already to show them something, then it's not a cold email anymore, or it's not a cold ask anymore. It's a little bit warmer. And, 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 and I like what you said about card. I mean, I was wondering, do we even still have cards anymore? But yeah. it sounds like it's still a useful tool. Yeah. And then, and, and it's also more subtle than why don't you look me up? And, and one thing too, having a website, like you have a website mm -hmm. that's fully flushed out. Mm -hmm. There's things you can find, bio, this, that. Sometimes I see people, it's something's under construction. Yeah. It's, it's coming soon mm -hmm. and then it never comes. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just having that there. Yeah. You know? I think it's, I think it's really odd uh, that LA is still a card place. When I came back in 2018, I was like, I'm not making cards. It's 2018, we'll be able to find each other in some way. And then I would go to all of these networking events and everyone had cards. And I was like, people are still collecting cards, you know? But yeah, it, 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 it happens. When you get your studio executive job or your network executive job and you go through your whole you know, uh, onboarding process, they're gonna give you cards. And people are walking around handing them out like that's that's what they do. Um, they're not going to tell you to look them up. They don't want you to randomly contact them in some other way. This is the way they want you to contact them, um, and and you will. And that's how you can you know continue on with the relationship, or at least send them the thing that they ask you to send them um, to see where you know it's going to go.